today on Running to Him. Christians stumble when they fail to recognize God's power to accomplish their task. Today's reading is Exodus chapter 3 verse 10 through chapter 4 verse 13, and we'll be concentrating on verses 10 and 11 of chapter 4. Exodus 4, 10 and 11 says, Then Moses said to the Lord, Please, Lord, I've never been eloquent, neither recently nor in time past, nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes him mute or deaf, or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now there is a story about Hudson Taylor, who was a 19th century missionary to China, and George Muller, a great man of prayer and founder of 117 schools and orphanages in England. Hudson Taylor was a faith missionary. He had supporters who voluntarily gave him money to support his work. However, he did not have a specific denomination supporting him with funds. Over time, the money began to dwindle until there was no more. That morning in breakfast, Hudson Taylor again prayed that God provide them with the money they need to continue their work. Shortly afterwards, a knock on the door came, and a ship captain was there holding an envelope containing money sent from George Muller. The envelope took six months to travel by sailing ship from England to China. God poked George Muller's heart to provide funds six months in advance of their being needed. When God lays out a task for us, we sometimes pause and then begin to doubt our ability to perform the task successfully. Then we take God out of the picture and attempt to figure out a way and how to get the job done through our own power or complain to God that we are incapable. God does not work that way in our lives. When he tasks us to do something, he will provide the power and necessary means to accomplish the task. If we fail at trusting his power and guidance, we result in a failed outcome. It's not God's fault, it's ours. We failed, not God. 1 John 5, verses 13 through 20 is an interesting set of verses that can help us see how God works. First, John discusses how we can know that we have a relationship with God, and he lists several attributes each time using the word translated no, but with one exception. All the times that the word no is used, it's actually coming from the verb to see, not the verb to think or realize it in your mind. For example, 1 John 5.20 says, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. The first time the word know is used in verse 20, John uses the word to see. We see our salvation. We see the things that God does. The second time the word know is translated, John uses the word to meaning having a mental knowledge of Christ through bringing those works into our brains. When we see his works with our eyes, then we know his power and his ability to accomplish the task he has given us. Now Moses saw the power of God's miracles, and then he acquired an understanding of who God is, but he still was not trusting God. And tomorrow we will see how God deals with unbelief. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at phineasjacobus at runningtohim.net.